أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم A litmus test for a masjid of the future would be what would happen if a girl not wearing hijab were to walk into the masjid because this is this is this type of question is important because it opens up a lot of discussion about how we treat people if this person walked into the masjid and someone says oh why are you wearing this why are you wearing that and this person feels left out this person feels attacked in a sense you know this person doesn't feel welcome then this person will just you know won't really be engaged by the masjid and that's not what she needs that's not what people like this needs that what we need to do is to bring in people and in doing so it requires a sense of patience and wisdom it requires a sense of understanding what how we can communicate with people and if you don't think this is significant there are thousands of people around the nation thousands of muslims who would benefit from reaching out to people that the masjid needs to be a place for everyone where is the masjid for that person who comes in and doesn't really come that often but just wants to come and you know come closer to allah where is the masjid for that person where is the masjid for the guy who has slowly stopped praying salah because he has gone through hardship and hardship in his life and he feels as if allah has abandoned him and he has slowly let his religion fade where is the masjid for that person where is the masjid for the girl who went through school and didn't really have any friends because on the one hand she was muslim so she couldn't engage with a certain group of people but on the other hand the muslims didn't really make friends with her because she kind of didn't fit into a certain mold and she slowly falls into bad habits and becomes on drugs and all these things and slowly falls out of line where is the masjid for that person and if you don't think that's significant i can guarantee you that there are thousands of people across this nation just like that who are in need of of this sort of support from our communities and we don't provide that and we have to think where is the masjid where is the community for those people on an individual level what can i do to reach out to people to bring them into islam rather than trying to push them out by promoting a certain specific mold of islam that i feel is correct a bedouin comes into the masjid of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he doesn't really know where he is or what he's doing and he urinates on the floor and you know people start freaking out and saying oh what are you doing but how does the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam respond he understands where this person is coming from he understands that this person doesn't know right so he doesn't make him feel bad and attack him rather he deals with the person in a way that's relevant to his context a man comes to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and says that he wants to commit zina what does the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam do does he say oh astaghfirullah how could you do this how could you even think this does he make the person feel bad for having these thoughts what does he do he sits down calmly and guides the person through it he responds to the person in a way that's relevant to how he needs to be taught He tells him calmly, "Would you like it for your mom? No. Would you like it for your sister? No. Would you like it for so and so? No." And he slowly leads him through this chain of logic. And by the end of it, he makes dua for this man and says, "Oh Allah, protect him from the shaitan and so on." And after that, this man never had anything to do with zina. Is what the hadith tell us. Because the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam had a wisdom in how he interacted with people. And as our communities expand and on an individual level as we try to reach out to people to bring them into Islam when you think about how we can implement that wisdom into our lives that we think strategically in terms of everything that we do that there's a give and take in everything that we do that sometimes we don't get what we want and sometimes we have to accept things that we don't necessarily like but in exchange we get something far broader and that's this idea of unity in Islam that the shaitan has given up on the shaitan has given up on getting you to do major sins instead he focuses on getting you to do minor things on forming divisions between the muslims and you see this all around the world you see this in our own communities you see this in individual masajid that the shaitan tries to play his little tricks to separate people but there's a wisdom in how we respond to that that we try that we do embrace this sense of compromise and discussion and listening to others rather than just saying what we want and that's how we get this idea of unity that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam teaches us that muslims are like bricks and if you imagine bricks in a in a house every single brick reinforces the other it gives each other brick what it needs rather than harming it or pushing against it 
They stand together in unison. And that's what gives them their strength. And that's something to think about. That the example that the Prophet ﷺ gives us in this story, that when he negotiated the Treaty of Hudaybiyah, that he demonstrated this sense of patience and looking in the long run with wisdom. And not only was this a prudent decision, but Allah reinforced this decision that He said this is a great victory. And this is something that has lessons for us to understand in how we carry ourselves as individuals and how we work with our communities and the people around us, our families, our classmates, our workmates, and so on. That we need to think about how we can be intelligent and listen to what people are saying rather than harming others. قولوا قولي هذا واستغفر الله ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم